Okay, hi brothers and sisters, here for a quick video, this isn't a wisdom study. Um, just uh, looking at some verses that might pertain to modern day prophecies concerning Israel. Um, we're all aware, I think now, of what's going on there. Um, what does it say? This verse came immediately to mind when I saw the various fronts that Israel's fighting on right now. <clears throat> and it all has to pertain to their, their land. And what does Exodus 23.30 says? And this is, God says, I, I have to do this slowly. I can't do it all at once. Um, and God says this in Exodus 23, verse 30. Little by little, I will drive them out before you. Who? Well, they're enemies. I will drive them out before you until you have increased enough to take possession of the land. Well, what land? All right. <clears throat> Let's go down and read the King James here. By little and little I will drive them out before thee, until thou be increased, and inherit the land. In verse 31 says, And I will establish your borders from the Red Sea to the Sea of the Philistines, and from the desert to the Euphrates, for I will deliver the inhabitants into your hands, and you will drive them out before you. Why? Why would God do that? Little by little. Well, God says this in... Okay, now I've lost it. Where was it? Yeah, it was in the same chapter, except it was a verse before, verse 29, all right, of Exodus 23. I will not drive them out before you in a single year, right? So we got to be looking at the time frames here. Like everybody has this idea that prophecy is all going to be fulfilled in this little bam, just like that. God says, I don't work that way. I bring you back in ingram increments. One, one of the reasons I do that is so that you can sustain, you know, all that's going to be placed upon you over, so I have to do it little by little, otherwise you wouldn't withstand it. And the other reason is I am still dealing with what you did, what you did wrong, and why I have to bring this around in increments, little by little. So I will not drive them out before you in a single year, otherwise the land would become desolate and wild animals would multiply against you. So, uh, you know, you can almost look at that twofold, I guess. Um, but here it tends to be looking at, you know, herds of animals, I think, wa literally wild animals. So little by little, I will drive them out ahead of you until you become fruitful and possess the land. Well, we see Israel... Um, growing now, don't we, in number. They are. There is more of them than there used to be. And so, the, and we also know that the ten tribes is still out in the lands of the Gentile. Why are they there? They're not in the land of Israel. But before that, those ten tribes, which is God's preserved ones, can return to the land. They have to take the land back in order for that to happen. And God's only going to allow that in increments, little by little. So in, um, uh, is that the verse I want? It may be this one. I may have went too far. Isaiah 49, what does God say? And we know this is the feminine aspect of the Godhead. We've talked about it. It's Ephraim. Ephraim is a term for the northern ten tribes, Israel. Um, and the entire nation was known to be under that banner, Israel. They're called Israel, the nation of Israel. They're not called the nation of Judah. They're called the nation of Israel under the northern tribe, the banner. So Isaiah 49, 6, it says, he says, she says, it is too small a thing for you to be my servant to restore the tribes of God, Jacob, Israel, and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles that my salvation may reach into the ends of the earth. Now, let's go down. They want to tell you this is all about Jesus. It's not about Jesus. This is actually about a preserved ones, the daughters of Israel, who was the woman's seed that the first Adam cast off in covenant. He did not want a covenant with her. This is all wrapped up in this coming to fruition. It is. Whether you see it in your lifetime is another, is another issue. Because God is dealing in increments, right? And she said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Israel. She's raising up the ten northern tribes out in the lands of the Gentiles. And to restore the preserved of Israel. I have my preserved ones out there, my scepter. 
I will also give thee for a light, a covenant to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the ends of the earth. Now what did we discover when we actually began to piece it all together? Well, the woman seed you're called an Israelite through the women inside the nation of Israel. It's not through the men that you're defined. You are defined through the women. And so when she gets, when that scepter got cast out into the lands of the Gentiles to bear the sins upon her head for what they were doing inside that nation, and we've discussed this on multiple videos, they actually go out and into this land called not inhabited, which was the Gentile nations, and there they're put in bondage of the Gentile nations, these women, these daughters, and eventually they marry into these nations. And so if you're defined as an Israelite through the woman's seed, this is how she claims the Gentiles as her children and becomes the light out there while smashing the ten toes on that idol of Jesus as your Lord and God. That's also part of this whole prophecy. They've got to build a temple. Now, people's confused on this. It's really not the temple you should be looking for for a man to inhabit it. It's really her temple um, that's supposed to be restored. Um, but here we get the women <clears throat> will be the light to the Gentiles. They are. And uh, they're going to come back with their children, yeah, with their daughters and sons. Um, once the land is restored, and what does God promise them in Jeremiah 30, verse 18? This is what the Lord says, I will restore the fortunes of, it says Jacob, Israel's tents, and have compassion on her dwellings. The city will be rebuilt on her ruins. This, it does say her ruins. And the palace will stand in its proper place. Where do we find the beginnings of the palace? In Song of Songs, chapter 8. What does it say? If she be a wall, we will build upon her a palace of silver. And if she be a door, we will enclose her with boards of silver. This has to do with the restoration of her house, her temple, her body. Yeah. They got completely wiped out of existence under this lying covenant, which we've discussed on multiple videos, so I'm not going to do it now. But in order for her house to be restored, it just told us back here in Jeremiah that all the land will be restored back to the Israelites. Out, while she's out in the lands of the Gentiles, there she, ta she claims these Gentile nations and becomes the light unto them as she smashes the toes on the false image. And that takes place when they begin to build that, that um, tabernacle for their Messiah to come back to, which is actually the idol in Daniel 2. So the devil's very clever. Satan, Adam's very clever. He's got this all wrapped up in male and idol worship as opposed to the truth of where the law of God truly came from. That was from the house in the forest of Lebanon, we discovered, which was a representation of the woman's house where she met with God and would bring the law to mankind. And that law was a gentle flowing water. You rejected the gently flowing waters of Shiloh, and the scepter will not depart from between Judah's feet until Shiloh comes. The meaning of Shiloh is to the one to whom it belongs to. And that is a foundation stone that was rejected before the foundations of the world. And that was her. They did not want her in covenant. She became the outcast that no man sought a covenant with. We know Shiloh is in Ephraim's territory. Piece it together. This is all going to happen in increments. It has to happen this way. Especially if these false prophets want the fulfilling of their own prophecies. So she says, fine, I'll fulfill them for you. If you want to be ruled by a male idol good enough, that will be one of these steps that we have to go through to teach you the truth. So God is still dealing with Israel in what Israel did wrong, right? War is never good for anybody, ever. We see many Israelites dying in this process here. And so it's never a good thing. So we see God actually dealing, right? And yet God is going to use all these bad things to bring about the good things for the Israelites, both inside the nation of Israel and the Israelites still cast out into the lands of the Gentiles, the true scepter of God. And so we get the con construct of the palace again in Song of Songs 8-9. If she be a wall, we will build upon her a palace of silver, and if she be a door, 
we will enclose her with boards of silver. So they want you to believe it's a man head and his body's female. Well, it seems like we've got those little rituals playing out in the world today where they're actually attacking her house. <laughs> yeah. And they're trying to put in play, actually, I think the next ritual uh, that has to do with the, the building of the temple. I may be wrong. And that is that they want a man on her body. Right? A man's head on her body. Sorry. Wrong. Wrong, wrong. She never was to have a man for her head, ever. God says, I will remove the name of Baal off of your tongue. He is not your Lord and Master. Um, her Lord and Master was identified as the Sovereign Lord. The law was found at her tongue. And over time, we saw the daughters actually turn away from that and bow to the idol of husband as if he was Lord and God. We've discussed this multiple times, so I'm not going to go over it. But we're just taking a quick look at modern day prophecies. I don't know what the men on the pulpit are telling you. Um, I'm just kind of looking uh, to see what the Spirit will show me um, on this. And so far, this is what I've concluded. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, you know, the fulfilling of all these prophecies, just like, bam. God tells us, I'll bring you back in increments. I have to. I absolutely have to. And uh, we are dealing with multiple subjects on multiple fronts. And uh, the teaching is going to go the same way that they fell back. She says, little by little. Um, was that in Isaiah 28 or Isaiah 29? To whom will I teach knowledge to? Let's go there. Um, I think it was Isaiah 29. Yeah, and I do have 28 pulled up. And, and I went to Isaiah 28, 16. So this is what the Sovereign Lord, that's daughter Israel's number, daughter Zion, the new branch's number. She's still out in the land of the Gentiles. See, I lay in a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. You're tested by what you believe in and how you will stand by that truth. Uh, precious cornerstone for a sure foundation, that's not an idol. An idol of women bowed down to Baal, her husband as Lord and God is called idolatry number one and then it leads to idolatry real bad nasty things um so precious cornerstone for a sure foundation the one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic now <clears throat> i believe if we go forward okay to chapter 29 this is what it says and this is going to go down the exact same way that it went down the first time when she took the truth from us and let you have your ways so this is what she says. Um, let's see if I can find it here. No, maybe it was maybe it was twenty eight. I believe it is twenty nine. I just must have went through it. She she says, "To whom will I teach knowledge to?" Got to locate it here. <clears throat> okay, so maybe it is 28. Okay, it is. It must be 28 that she says this. <clears throat> it's hard to keep them straight. Even with key passages, because you get some new stuff mixed in there. Right there. <clears throat> so verse 9, she says, Whom shall she teach knowledge to, and whom shall she make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the breast, from the milk, drawn from the milk, drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. So as a child learning the truth, she can't just dump it all on you because you won't receive it that way. You'll throw it all back up. She's got to teach it to you little by little and in increments. And it's the same way with the nation of Israel. She's slowly bringing it all to fruition. But she does it in her time. God does it in His time. God does it in her time. She's the High Almighty. We get that in 2 9. What's uh, the strong Greek word uh, that has uh, God in it? And it's got the feminine and then it's got the masculine. So we know it's mother that is the almighty and then there's the father that exalts the almighty and her law. Otherwise you will <clears throat> end up in a world like we've got one that's in total um, chaos 
and because they simply didn't want to receive the law off of her tongue is what we're told and what we've understood so but she says so who who do i teach this to little by little for with stammering lips in another tongue will she speak to this people to whom she said this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest and this is the refreshing yet you would not hear it you would not hear it off of her tongue too much pride the first adam had that's what we're told he was the accuser but the word of the lord was unto them precept upon precept precept upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little and there a little that they might go and fall backwards and be broken ensnared and taken and under my last video i wrote wrote that we are that there's a verse there in isaiah is it 42 where we are all snared and in prison houses we are trapped and we are we're trapped in a religious lie in law so the way that she brings you back in increments <clears throat> when she turns you around <clears throat> return return oh shulamite is to teach you little by little line by line so that you might eventually be found standing for the truth this is all in context you have to put it in order and you can't speed it all up right <clears throat> these are in god's this is in god's time frame it's not going to happen like you've been told. God's time frame happens very differently. Very differently. Uh, and every time an event like this happens, oh, it's the end, it's the end, it's the end. We're in process. We're in the process of restoration. And in the time of God, that takes time. Little by little. I cannot restore you all at once. I simply can't. And the, the reason she gives... I will not drive them out before you in a single year, otherwise the land would become desolate and wild animals would multiply against you. You've got to have people to fill those lands, people that are the right people, the people that follow the law of God. That was not the Torah. She said, I gave you my law. It was the gently flowing waters of Shiloh. The kings took decree, did, took counsel amongst themselves to wipe her law off of their tongue and to write what they wanted. And they wrote it in the Babylonian captivity. And that become the law that fed out and actually puts a yoke on all our necks. She said, you rejected my gently flowing water. She said that, I forget where, but in Deuteronomy 4, she says, you saw no image, you make no image. You make neither male nor female. And we found them making a male and a female image. And over time, they tore the female one and told, down and told the females they could come and worship at the male's idol. Well, that's what we got going on in the land right now. <clears throat> Why do you think that idol in Daniel 2 gets smashed on the toes by the, the ten toes? By the ten tribes, Ephraim, female, out in the lands of the Gentile, which is the light of the Gentiles, which is also why they're Israelites, why she gets to claim them. You are found to be an Israelite through the woman's seed, not the man. That is why it's called the woman's seed. So, I mean, you have to put it in context. Um, and, you know, we're going to get some things wrong as we go. We're being, we're being taught. <clears throat> we are. And we have to be patient. You can't be frightful. You, you know, you can't be afraid of all these things that's coming to pass and it's so easy to be afraid of all the things that's coming to pass especially when we rely on you know somebody else's tongue to teach it to you instead of letting the spirit show it to you just say to the holy spirit please holy spirit i'm afraid i don't know i don't know how to look at these things will you show me how to look at these things and i guarantee you if you're sincere in your heart of seeking that deeper truth and not just bound to the feet of an idol not letting them in on the pulpit rope you into all of these horrible thoughts and ideas that some of them wants to rope you into that jesus is coming back to his temple and yeah 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 no yeah, that's the antichrist he's already got his great force in play right now um but um god will the holy spirit will lead you into those deeper truths and uh, it may not come in an instant it'll come little by little meaning that we have to have the patience and the trust to place in, into that Holy Spirit to teach us those things right. Um, so there's a quick video. I just thought it, it was a topic that we needed to... Um